So we're going overseas soon. I have my clothes sorted, but what about my tech gear? Now with all I guess, so look. Uh, oh fuck, I haven't filmed in so long, I don't know how to do it. Now with all I guess sorted clothes wise, what am I gonna do tech wise though? Well, I've had a lot of time to think about this. And over the last sort of six to eight months, I've come to a sort of semi-conclusion of what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. I don't know yet quite what the schedule is going to be for the outputting of videos and stuff over here, but we'll find out as we go. Because I hear on the trip we have bugger all internet. So, at least we've got some decent Wi-Fi in the hotel rooms at night. I don't know how much I'm going to put out. I'm still going to record stuff and then when I come back, put stuff out. But, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Now, my main rig that I'm going to be filming on pretty much daily is my Canon 70D right here. It's got a Rode VideoMic Pro on top. I know I need to pack a lot of extra batteries and I've got some on order right now, so hopefully they turn up soon and I won't have any issue battery-wise there. But when I need to be a bit more inconspicuous or need something different or Amber's got my camera here, I need a backup, don't I? So that's when this comes in handy. This is my GoPro Hero 5 Black. Now this is going to be... I pretty much backup vlog setup. Now on top, I've purchased a Rode Video Micro, just a basic, simple external microphone that I can use backup on my Canon here if for some reason I kill the battery because this doesn't have to be externally powered. It'll be run off the camera as long as I have enough batteries. So how I've set this one up basically is I purchased a hot shoe mount, stuck that on with super glue, just onto the frame here. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Comes a little windsock on here, which is pretty handy. So with that mounted on top, I have basically put it onto a GoPro three-way stand, pretty much. It's the most convenient way that I can think of doing it. Now, one of the main downsides to having external mics on top of your GoPro has to be this damn adapter from GoPro. There's no other way of doing it. So how I've got around this, I've just stuck it on the front. Come on, I feel good. Now, how I've solved this problem just chuck a zip tie around it. You don't have to be super fancy with this. It's gonna go everywhere anyway. It's gonna get battered up. If I have to buy a new one or do any modifications to it, it's not gonna be too hard to get off. Just slip it down, slip it up, boom, off. Now as for vlogging on it, it's pretty easy. It gets everything I want. And now with the external microphone, I'm not gonna have super shit audio like the GoPros usually put out. And of course one of the main features of this has to be that it is super light. Fold it up. Got a nice front facing cam, nice and easy to use. That'll pretty much be my backup go to camera if the Canon here is not available. Tripods, tripods, tripods. What am I going to do over there without a tripod? Well, I'm going to take some form of tripod. Mainly this. This is the Gorillapod Focus tripod with a ball joint on top. Nice and easy to use, and it's big enough for my camera here. It's heavy though. That's got to be the biggest downside here, and I'm not too sure how I'm going to fit this in just yet, but if I'm trying to conserve weight, I'm probably not going to put it on my carry-on luggage. Probably going to have to go in my bag somewhere. As for lenses, for the Canon at least anyway, I know this is Amber's favourite one. It's the 18 to 135 just stock kit lens with the Canon 70D here. Now along with the GoPro, you've got to have the compulsory, pretty much compulsory, GoPro accessories. I've got a small bag here that I've collected all the stuff I have for GoPro pretty much in it. Harnesses, mounts, all that sort of stuff. I've got to refine this a little bit, but most of it's going to come with me. So now we move on to editing. How am I going to edit my stuff over there? I picked up a 13 inch MacBook Pro Retina. Uh, the 2015 model, didn't need the 2016 one. Mainly because this has all the stuff I need on it. Didn't want to blow the extra cash on that. So combined with that, 
and a couple of external hard drives here, I should be all right. The MacBook itself has all my software on it. I use Final Cut Pro to edit my footage. It helps it just runs easier on the MacBooks. As for the hard drives, I'm using a WD My Passport Ultra, two terabyte at the moment. These I'll buy over there as I go, as I need them, because I don't really need to pack up right now and store all my stuff on it. Now how I'm planning to do it is film every day, go home every night, load it up, date it, label it, and put it in all specific folders so that when I come back from overseas, if I'm not able to keep up a regular upload routine, I'll be able to then play around with it and put some out every week from then on for a little while. So that'll keep me busy. Now also while I'm over there, I have a stack of SD cards, different sizes, micro SD. Basically I have a whole range of them. Should be able to get away with it most of the day there. And again, if I need any more, I'll just buy them overseas. Now power. How the hell am I gonna power myself while I'm over there? Well, first off, I have a couple of uh, external battery packs here. Handy little things to have. All USB, so I just plug any of my devices into it, which will be nice and handy. I'm gonna take a couple of them, spread them between my bags, so that uh, if some of them get lost or some of them get confiscated, we at least have one or two over there. If not, I'll just buy a few over there when I have to. Now, because I'm taking GoPros, they need a few batteries. Right now, I've got uh, one of the uh, dual GoPro battery chargers right here. I'm probably gonna pick up another one because they also come with a battery which is quite handy because I want four and right now I've only got three. So I get another one of these and I get another battery. That and that work hand in hand, which is quite convenient because I just plug one in overnight, boom, done, all my batteries are charged. What about the Canon though? That's where this and this come in handy. This is the stock battery charger that comes with it and I've got a couple of these which I just plug into USB, which is quite handy. So. Same as with the GoPros, just plug it into an external battery pack, boom, done, dusted, fully recharged, ready to go. Now as for my MacBook, I've got the standard charger here, plus also one of these little plug bug things. Just connects onto your MacBook charger like that. Has a USB charger on top, and charges up my MacBook. Now because I'm going to be traveling around Europe, I've got a few different adapters to take with me plugins and things like that, that uh, should get me through most of the trip. I'm planning on taking one of my generic multi-boxes over there and having a plug-in adapter that I can just plug in around from there and just charge my devices if I have to when I need to. All my, vol uh, all my devices are multiple voltage so I should be able to get away with it. And if I get really stuck, I do have my portable backup batteries. Now I'm not going to take anything over there special phone-wise, I just got a standard iPhone 6S which should get me through most of my trip. Just turn the roaming off of course because otherwise I'm going to get some ridiculous charges when I come back. Now, because I'm taking all this gear, where am I going to put it all? Now, most of the GoPro accessories, tripods, things like that, are going to get split between my bag and Amber's bag. Because if one goes missing, at least I have some of it. But for the most expensive stuff like this, my laptop and my GoPro stuff, like the cameras themselves, I may have to put it in some place pretty special. So for the trip, my day pack, I've actually got one of these. This is a pack safe camera bag. So pretty much on the side, boom. Nice, easy to access for my camera right on the side here. DSLR will go on here. Microphone on top. Anything else will go further down. And that leaves me enough room on top here for extra clothes, socks, shoes, jackets, things like that. Why do I choose the pack safe stuff? Well. After doing a lot of research, this is quite a popular bag. Maybe not the colour for everyone, because they come in this green and yellow, or black. Now, I wanted to find my stuff nice and easy, so I picked the green. So, inside the main pocket where all my camera gear goes, I've got enough places for my DSLR with either lens on it. I've got another place for just a single lens on its own. I've got the place just up above the camera for the external microphone. Now I have a couple of pockets at the back that will do good for uh, external um, battery packs, things like that. I've got a pocket just set aside for extra batteries and cables that go to that if I need them any time to charge or whatever. Now in the front, I'm going to have a little pocket there that's got the RFID blocking wallet thing through it. So that pocket's going to be pretty much locked the whole time. It's going to have a couple of my memory cards in there and probably my external hard drive if that's not locked away in a hotel room. Now, it doesn't really matter what bag you take over there, 
as long as you're safe with it and you're smart with it. Don't let that out of your sight. Boom, no issue. Okay, that just took a multi-burst shot when I wasn't even filming. Now the handy thing about PackSafe bags that just puts my mind at rest a little bit is that they're slash proof. So anyone takes a knife to my bag, I'm pretty much safe. Stuff, But most of the time, as long as I'm safe with it, as long as I'm watching it and I don't leave it out of my sight, I'm going to be fine. Well, I hope so, because it's going to suck if I have all my gear stolen. So that's it. That's pretty much how I'm planning to take my travel tech with me. I may do another one of these on the trip to see how it's going. If there's any refreshments or re refinements that I can make on it, I'll put that in. But right now, as it is, as I pack that, it should be fine. If you've got any recommendations out there, hit me up about them. I'm always keen to find other ways, other easy ways, other better ways to do it. Now I know this has been quite a tech filled episode, so if you're into that, give it a like. If not, give it a like anyway. But this whole video is just pretty much my idea on what I'm taking over for my tech travel gear. Um, that sort of thing, how I'm going to vlog, how I'm, because I'm going to film the whole time. I don't know when I'm going to put everything out, but uh, it will get out there at some point, because it's good for me to look back on it when I'm later on in life and have my kids and family see it. It's going to be great. So stay with us. I know in the next couple of weeks, me and Amber are going to chuck out a video together uh, with what we're actually doing on the trip to get you guys amped along with us, because we are counting down the days right now. I think it's only about 70 days for us left. And uh, yeah, we're pretty excited, so come join us and see what we get up to. And that's a wrap. For tonight anyway.